Hello, everybody. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your weekly check in with your inner divine feminine. Yeah. Very happy Saturday to you guys. If you're catching it on us on catching this on a Saturday, um, I hope you guys are having a great day. If not, I hope you have you're having a great weekend. And if you're catching this during the week, I hope you have a great week ahead. Yes. So. Uh, once again, your weekly check in to connecting with your divine feminine energy. So um, I really just as I was sitting here getting ready, preparing to, you know, start doing this reading, I was really feeling like I want to I want this to be a little more of a relaxed feel to these readings. Um, there was a sense of urgency in the beginning because collectively speaking, we are very much in this time period or this energetic space of needing to connect with and integrate both our divine, <laughs> okay, spirit is saying our divine masculine energies, okay, um, but both really. It's mainly because the, the feminine has been on the rise and then there's been a lot of focus on the feminine energy. It's almost as if the masculine energy was kind of pushed off to the side. That's not really the case here, okay? So yes, we already understand that this is what we're going to be, this is a way of looking into what's going on internally to see what's going on with our inner feminine or masculine energies when you're watching the masculine reading. And yes, this could be a way of looking at or seeing what's going on with a, a counterpart in the external world. But really, I really just want this to be, I'm feeling like we should make this just a weekly check in with our inner feminine and inner masculine energy. So that's kind of the feel that I'm going for with this right now, yeah? So as usual, I have four different tarot decks. We're gonna look into the different elements of what's going on with your inner feminine energy. And then we're gonna close the reading with Oracle Guidance from the Love Your Inner Goddess deck, yeah? So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please help us gain a clear and accurate representation and understanding of what's going on with our inner feminine energies. And please help guide us in terms of developing a closer and deeper bond with our inner feminine energies. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, let's get started here. So my first look, I'm using the uh, the Book of Shadows Tarot. This is a two-part deck, so this is the So Below deck. Or, yeah, this is the So Below deck. Um, but the first thing I want to look at, and I'm going to give this five shuffles, is what is the current energetic state that your inner feminine energy, energies are residing in? What is the current energetic state of your inner feminine energies <laughs> it's so crazy because as i'm doing this reading the masculine energies are like right up like really coming forward um they're really wanting themselves to be be known but also i really feel like mass the masculine energies are really watching very closely very intently that's <laughs> And the feminine energies are kind of just over there kind of laughing about it. Um, it's kind of cute, to be honest. But okay, we're focusing on feminine in this reading. So what is the current energetic state of your inner feminine energies? That's shuffle number three. Shuffle number two here. Current energetic state of the inner feminine energies. That was four. And this... This is five. Yes, this is five. Okay. <laughs> I got distracted there for a second. I don't know why, like literally, I'm, I'm really trying very hard to focus on the feminine energies, but the masculine keeps coming through. You'll get your turn, masculine. Hold off a second, but okay, we're talking about the feminine. All right, so the current energetic state of your inner feminine energies. Let's see where she currently stands right now. And it's interesting because it, it, a, a, Part of the reason why the masculine could be coming forward so much is because there really is an effort to integrate right now. So the mass, the feminine, actually, the current energetic state be, ooh, wow. Whoa. All right. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let the cards talk. Okay, so we have the eight of swords here as an overall energy. However, 
With that said, we do have the Sun, which is great, the Page of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, the Three of Wands, the Knight of Swords, the Knight of Wands, the King of Wands, holy shit, and the Queen of Pentacles. Okay, guys, so check it out. This is ex actually exactly what I was going to say before this whole stack of cards came out. Part of the reason why masculine energies are coming, are, are I'm, I'm perceiving them as to be so forward right now in terms of the energetic state of the, your inner feminine. What is your inner feminine currently surrounded by? There is an effort right now, uh, I want to say consciously, on the feminine part, but, but also on the masculine. Again, we'll get to that in the masculine reading. But on the feminine side, there is a conscious effort to integrate Queen of Pentacles, King of Wands. The Queen of Pentacles is um, how the feminine really has been coming out lately, quite sincerely and quite regularly, okay? The King of Wands, wow, this is so cool. The King of Wands being that passionate, fiery um, energy, knowing exactly what it is that you want and not being afraid to go after it. I did just see 555 on the counter. Um, I am definitely seeing an integration of the feminine and masculine energies. However, once we get up here, let's look up here for a second. You have the sun with the nine of pentacles, all right? So light is really shining down quite well on the feminine. Um, she's very passionate, knight of wands. She's very sincere, knight of swords. And she's very much on her path three of wands. Definitely waiting for return on an investment. I am seeing this three of wands energy as um, keeping to herself as indicative of this hermit mode that a lot of the feminine collective has, has recently slipped into, stepped into consciously. Um, and this is an effort to... Um, to connect with herself, to love herself, to nurture herself. Uh, and even if you are more of a masculine energy um, and you're watching this now, especially if you're in an energy of integrating with your inner feminine, you may even be influenced to kind of take a break, take some time to yourself, learn how to love yourself, spend, uh, and, and, and you do that by spending time with yourself, listening to your heart, listening to your body. If you're feeling tired, take the time to rest. If you wanna go to the spa, get a mani and a pedi, or get a massage or whatnot, whatever. You can absolutely do that. Listen to your inner soul. Listen to your inner child. Do things that you that that you know might on the surface to the sleepers out there, the people that are still you know not so awakened yet. Doing things that may seem childish or uh, uh, something that a child would do, or just not necessarily something that you would find your average adult doing, and yet you're doing it because it makes you feel happy, it fills you with joy. And that absolutely is part of being on your path, three of wands, okay? And that's also an energy of setting yourself up into be in the receptive mode to receive that which is you have uh, endeavored to right? Taking the, the, that which you have started the momentum rolling on or, or, or invested in. And this is really, I really feel like this is putting, investing time, effort, and energy into yourself, into loving yourself, into nurturing yourself. 100% absolutely okay um we do have this page of swords here and i i do want to say i really do want to say masculine counterparts out there potentially really could be watching the feminine right now but this is really uh, i'm not gonna i'm gonna be honest with you guys this is really if if there is um if there if if you're more of a masculine energy and you are aware of your counterpart and you know you're able to find ways to uh, discreetly observe them, watch them, keep tabs on them, whatnot, whatever. Yeah, okay, that could be kind of creepy. But also I'm getting the sense of trying to understand the independence that the feminine has really stepped into. Nine of Pentacles and the Sun, okay? It's like it's very much an energy of, well, wait a second, how did how did she get there? Why what is she doing? Or he, again, we're not talking about gender here, we're only talking about energy, okay? But what is he or she doing that has them so solid, so secure, so safe in themselves? Has them so abundant and so successful? Like, what, what is that? And how can I recreate that in my life? That's what I'm hearing here. Eight of Swords as the overall energy really is not a bad thing because you're breaking free from this, especially feminines, especially the more you sit in this energy, here, three of pentacles, nine of pentacles with the sun. The more you sit in this energy, the more you break yourself free from these chains, from this confinement, from the, the conditioning, whatnot, whatever. Um, 
I'm hearing masculine energy. Well, the more you break yourself free from the control of masculine energy and the control of the patriarchy, which is allowing you to balance and integrate both masculine and feminine to become a greater form of your safe self, a greater version, you know, a greater, a, a more whole version. The Eight of Swords definitely is feeling like, I, I'm picking up here that the, that the Eight of Swords in, in the sense of breaking free from some sort of confinement, from some sort of mental prison, from sort of, some sort of entrapment, whatnot, whatever, is a central theme for the feminine energies right now, 100%, which is actually an excellent, excellent thing. Because the more you as an individual break yourself free from some sort of change or confinement and you start to live an authentic life and you start to live from this place of freedom, the more you absolutely influence others to be able to do the same for themselves. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're, again, standing on your soapbox which is pretty ironic for me, for someone like me to say that, who, <laughs> who has this YouTube channel, right? Where I'm basically, I could be perceived to be as preaching to others, but I'm really not trying to do that. If you're looking for the guidance, if you're looking for the understanding that here I am, the messenger, the open channel that's bringing this forward towards you, you can take my advice or you don't have to. You really don't even have to listen if you don't want to. In no way am I requiring anyone to do so, nor am I, am I trying to tell you how to live your lives. However, the more that you do these things, things for yourself and you just you just lead by example basically okay the more that you do that the more that you uh, you influence others to want to do the same for them and then potentially they could either come towards you and say hi hey hey whoa okay how did you achieve this or or they can start to, you know, do their own research and try to figure out what, how to, you know, find this sense of happiness that you seem to have found in yourself, especially the masculine. Yes. Excellent. OK, beautiful, beautiful energies. Next thing I want to look at here, and I'm going to use the wild unknown tarot for this. What are the current challenges that your inner feminine energies are surrounded by? or that your inner feminine energies are facing. Yeah, five shuffles. What are the challenges that the inner feminine, that your inner feminine are currently facing? Two. Three. Four. And five. What are the current challenges that your inner feminine energies are facing? Okay, here we go. Current challenge that your inner feminine is facing. Wow. We have the High Priestess. We have the Five of Wands. We have the Four of Wands. That's enough, huh? Oh, ho, ho! and then we have the King of Wands again. Ooh. All right. So, so far we have the King of Wands twice. So, okay. Um, what I'm getting here. <laughs> ooh. All right. All right. Inner, you're, all right. So your inner feminine is currently being challenged uh, with the reality or the process of balancing or integrating masculine energy into her, I wanna say her existence, into her life, into uh, how she, okay, into how she has come to understand herself and her reality. Um, and this is in direct opposition to conformity. The challenge here for the feminine is in, in integrating these divine masculine energies, king of wands, you're having to work through the process of understanding what true masculine energy represents, stands for, okay? And that is a lesson that's coming through with the high priestess. This is not something that you can learn from the hierophant who would be the high priestess's uh, counterpart and the masculine counterpart to the high priestess, the high priestess obviously being the feminine. Um, and you would think logically that you would wanna learn this from the hierophant. 
potentially, or an energy like the Hierophant. But that's not the case here. Because the Hierophant represents conformity. Yes, teaching and learning, but it represents three-dimensional energies. It also has a strong uh, affinity for, like I said, con conformity, but also twisted masculine energy, okay? Mind control and all that kind of stuff. And yes, what the Hierophant represents here, even though that may sound dark and, and, and narcissistic and scary and, and evil and detrimental, mental, it actually does serve a purpose. And that purpose is to help you maybe in a, uh, I guess you could look at it as a backhanded or an inadvertent way to um, teach you to learn to love yourself for who you truly are and release yourself from any forms of indoctrination or conformity because that's not truly who you are, right? You are an infinite spiritual being that's having a physical existence, okay? Of course, the Hierophant does stand for certain societal structures that help keep things functioning in the three-dimensional world, but now it's time to rise above that. Thus, steps in the High Priestess. So now you can get to start to understand the masculine energy straight from source, okay? So you're tapping into what true masculine energy stands for or represents from directly from the universal higher uh, realms of knowledge and existence, right? But that flies, I keep hearing conformity, but that, that whatever it is you're learning in terms of, you know, your masculine energy, your own inner masculine energy, or just masculine energy as a whole, that's coming from the high priestess, flies directly in the face of what you know of the masculine energy and what you've experienced in of masculine energy in the three-dimensional world. And I guess conformity keeps coming forward because you're having to look at and integrate and understand masculine energy outside the realm of conformity. You are having to see the see masculine energies King of Wands. This is where I'm getting all this masculine from. King of Wands. You are learning to see masculine energy in a different way. And you have this Four of Wands here because you are, and this is, look at this, this is progression, you guys. This is for the four to the, from the four to the five. So you do have the spiritual foundation that is necessary for the High Priestess to step in and say, okay, I have some more that I want to teach you without you completely overloading or completely losing your shit or like your whole sense of self and existence crumbling at your feet. You have that balance and that, uh, that, 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 primer to now expand your awareness in terms of what true masculine energy, energy represents. Now, I, I, I am feeling compelled because actually uh, during, I saw a comment on Morning Coffee this past week, someone was confused, what is masculine energy? What is feminine energy? Is there a test for that? Which I find very funny because Asking a question like that, well, is there, ex is there an exam to see whether you're more masculine or more feminine, is very three-dimensional, is very masculine, is very, a very logical masculine type of thing or a type of way of looking at it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give a little bit, but ultimately it is best for you to go within and you to understand uh, what masculine energy represents for you. But in the service of giving you some sort of... Um, I don't, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, a starter, a primer, we'll say masculine energy is the direct, is the action taker, is the doer, is the go-getter, is somewhat of a provider, although the feminine is a provider in her own way as well. But the masculine energy is the electric charge, is the positive charge, is the warden, is the energy that, 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 that goes out and does something, gets something done, goes out and acquires something. It is the action-taking side of the whole, right? The feminine is the, uh, well, also masculine energy uh, represents the physical realm and logical thinking, the conscious e uh, consciousness, um, uh, uh, the ego also, right? Feminine energy is uh, passive, is receptive, is magical, is intuitive, um, is the instinct, uh, is the, the intuition. It represents psychic awareness, represents spirit uh, or, 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 or non-physical, um, is the receptive one, is the one that, that sets the environment and allows that which she has 
which she desires to manifest to come to gravitate towards her she pulls in whereas the masculine pushes out yeah these two complement each other and become the two parts of that same whole and then so that allows you to go back and forth to be in the feminine to understand the the the, the spiritual aspects of things to understand your emotional side it, the feminine does represent emotions as well um and to set the stage for whatever it is that you want to come to you so you can be in that receptive mode but then in times where you do need to take action then the masculine is activated and now you can take and you're going to constantly go back and forth between uh active and passive active and passive yes hopefully that helps you to start to integrate and now keeping that in mind you can take that as you go within do your meditations what what not whatever you can use that as a way to start identifying what is the more masculine quantities the more feminine qualities within you yes Excellent. Moving on to the next step in this reading here, I want to look at with the Golden Universal Tarot, what does your inner feminine want you to know at this time? Yeah? Five shuffles. What does your inner feminine want you to know? What does the inner feminine, your inner feminine want to say? This is shuffle number three. What does your inner feminine want you to know? Four. And five. What does your inner feminine want you to know? All right, here we go. What does your inner feminine want you to know? What does your inner feminine want to say at this moment? Hey now, the Queen of Cups. Ooh, interesting. Okay, overall energy is the Eight of Pentacles, all right? You have the Queen of Cups, but that's come out with the, ooh, the Ten of Cups and the Queen of Swords. But those two have come out in reverse, and it's very, very interesting. Because what I was seeing already with the Queen of Cups, and this has been a, a pretty re recurring message lately, um, the Queen of Cups has been asking, the Feminine is saying, we need to be much more compassionate, okay? If you really want this Ten of Cups energy, then you're gonna have to step out of this Queen of Swords energy uh, a little sooner than you might think, is what I just heard. Um, it is being too cutthroat, being too defensive, that is keeping us from, from integrating with the masculine, number one, but also number two is holding your ultimate fulfillment in emotions at bay. Now, it is understandable as to why many of us in the collective have reached this Queen of Swords energy here, but it's become overkill at this point. Yes, you do need to defend yourself. Yes, you do need to keep narcissistic energies at bay, both externally and inter internally. Yes, you do need to step away from toxic energies, toxic people, toxic situations, uh, circumstances, whatnot, whatever, and not give it any leeway to enter into your life again. However, there is an overcritical energy that's coming through with this Queen of Swords, um, an overly cutthroat and overly defensive energy um, that is really hurting the process here, okay? With this Eight of Pentacles as the overall energy here, there is, there is some work that needs to be done within the self to really allow yourself to move from this cutthroat energy back into compassion, unconditional love, and empathy, all right? Because these are things, that's what the, uh, the Queen of Cups represents, a psychic awareness, empathic ability, empathic nature, unconditional love, and nurturance, right? Now, and it, that is a difficult, it is a balancing act because many of those of us that are in the feminine collective were very much in this energy of the Queen of Cups when we first started in what we, I guess you could say the Twin Flame activation or the Divine Counterpart activation, I guess is more appropriate at this point in the journey. Um, but... When we were in that energy of the Queen of Cups before, it was the Queen of Cups reversed, and we had, we were lacking, very strongly lacking in healthy boundaries, okay? We were overstepping boundaries of our perceived masculine, and we were allowing other people to overstep our own boundaries that we thought we had, but we couldn't really enforce. Well, now, 
in nat it just at, at, naturally so the pendulum has swung to where we're now we're on the on the complete opposite and we have these overly strong boundaries make sense now the universe is quite aware of how much how challenging this is going to be so it's not like we're asking you to do this in any sort amount of time um, we're not rushing we're definitely not trying to rush you into this okay also there are no clocks in the universe right um, who said that uh, uh, Jennifer of Soul Source Tarot put that in my head she was like there are no clocks in the universe and she was so completely right I totally totally resonate with that but we are asking you says the universe to do this work to complete the cycle, to complete your whole being the balance of masculine and feminine energy, which is currently the energy that is surrounding the feminine to begin with. Queen of Pentacles, King of Wands, okay? Excellent. Finally, from the Tarot, I wanna look at action steps that we can take in order to further connect with our inner feminine energies. And I do want to point out, Spirit is asking me to point out that these are, this is a direct channeling from the Divine Feminine. Uh, from the Divine Feminine energies, from the source of Divine Feminine existence, whatnot, whatever, okay? So this is actually really, yeah, it is your inner feminine. This is three. It's the inner feminine in all of us. It's the, the, the higher awareness of the divine feminine energy that we're tapping into right now. So this is really quite awesome. Number four, action steps that you can take to further integrate with your inner feminine, with the divine feminine energies. And five. All right, guys, let's see what we get here. There's that Queen of Swords again. Okay, so the challenge right now, while you are working on integrating and understanding what masculine energy truly means, what it re truly represents, untwisting your sense of, of, of masculine energy, the challenge right now for the feminine is to learn how to use this Queen of Swords energy effectively, rightfully, and to balance your Queen of Swords with the rest of the queens, right? As the, uh, you know, the Divine Feminine rep is represented by, in the Tarot, is represented by uh, one of her forms, is represented by the Empress, which is the Queen of all Queens. The Empress is the balance of the Queen of Pentacles, Swords, cups and wands what we're being asked to do right now is learn to use the queen of swords energy fruitfully i guess we could say correctly not overdo it right and holy shit there's the emperor overall energy is the eight of swords again okay I mean, I told you guys, the emperor, the masculine energies are very strong, very prominent, very close to the feminine right now. The feminine is really focused on, on um, integrating with the masculine. And this is very interesting because I, 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 I was picking up the channeling as it, you know, uh, as it came out when I was looking at the Queen of Swords. But now the Emperor is here. Um, and the Emperor being the master of one's own domain, the Emperor also represents control, okay? But here we're learning how to effectively control these Queen of Swords energies so that they're not hurting ourselves, they're not hurting others. It's not a detriment. It's interesting because uh, from my point of view, the Queen of Swords can seem very masculine. She can, she, I mean, she's, she's very stern. She's, she can be quite controlling. Very interesting. Sorry, guys, I was being taken back to another reading in, oh, it was morning coffee for this weekend in which the emperor came out with the queen of pentacles. Well, now 
And so you might want to check that one out. Um, it was morning coffee for the weekend of uh, November 1st through the 3rd. And um, uh, I don't, I'm, not, I'm trying to remember, but the emperor came out with the queen of pentacles. And my mind was, I, I was brought back to that because it's not about um, one being better than the other. Yes, the emperor is major arcana. And in this case, the queen of swords is minor arcana like the queen of pentacles was minor arcana in that reading but it's not it, it's not about one being higher or above the other it's about integrating so that you can reach this sense of mastery that the emperor and the empress represent very interesting now also um in order to further connect with the inner feminine as a whole, in a more balanced and healthy way, you have to learn to have compassion for the emperor or for the masculine as well, because that is the natural state. The natural state for both masculine and feminine is being compassionate and loving and understanding of the counterpart. Accepting, nurturing of, whatnot, whatever, but that also doesn't mean that you're going to put up with their shit, but... Neither one of them are going to do that, but also neither one of them in a balanced and healthy and whole state are really going to be doing, putting forth any sort of energies to make, to manipulate the other, I guess you could say. Wow. All right, so now let's close out the reading with Oracle Guidance from the Love Your Inner Goddess deck, yes? guidance to close out this reading please spirit connecting with your ooh, inner feminine there you have it we have card number 44 uh, earth goddess and on the card it says who you are i'm totally seeing this as a queen of pentacles energy okay that's adorable all right now 44 is a master number earth uh angels and i almost actually i wanted to just say earth Earth Angel. Oh, wow. This is the last card in the deck. Okay. Uh, when this card appears in a reading, it says, to live the dream, we have to surrender the fantasy. This can be fa painful. It feels like the end, when in fact, it is the beginning. Once the pain passes, there is the joy of what we have yearned for coming to life. It may not be as perfect as the fantasy, but it will be real and it can nourish us. We can build our appetite for life with dreams, but we cannot be fed by them. The soul requires real life experience to become fully alive, to have experiences and grow. There's fantasy that wants to become reality for you. Don't let a few gritty moments or human imperfections prevent you from experiencing the joy of heaven on earth. This is what's getting in that way, in the way of that. A queen of swords, being overly critical, too cutthroat, right? Excellent. The spiritual guidance of this card says, you have beautiful dreams and wonderful visions of what life could be. It is not enough to imagine them. You want to live them. This is exactly how you are meant to feel. For that to happen, you must practice feeling grounded, taking practical earthly steps one at a time to bring your dreams to life. The universe will send so much help your way, but you are the one who must take the steps. Spirit cannot do that for you. Even if you are not sure how your biggest, boldest dreams can come together, you can still ask yourself, what is it that I can do now? Sometime, what is it that I can do now? Sometimes it will be obvious and it, sorry, let me start, try that again. Sometimes it will be an obvious action that you can take. And sometimes you will need to pray and meditate and ask for the way to be shown to you. When you can do something, do it. When you cannot rest and wait for your intuition to nudge you when the time is right to take action. Remember, you are an earth goddess. You have the power to manifest your visions to bring your beautiful ideas to life in the world. 
This is what you are here to do. Remember to love yourself enough to recognize your creative power and use it joyfully each day. Beautiful. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading next time. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Take care. Mwah! Bye.